Thank you. I think that this already touches up upon um, a lot of the issues that came up, came up this morning around obstacles, um, obstacles that can be financial obstacles to participation, but also opportunities for enlarging our audience by reaching out to, uh, to schools at, at, at different levels to encourage children to uh, be part of the artistic education process. So now we are going to move into our afternoon activity, which is really going to focus on this question of diversity and disability. Um, I'm going to ask Megan to come and present the video, which we will watch and which will lead into further, further wonderful activities. Hello again, everyone. So we're going to transition into a different topic now, and we're going to be discussing how our institutions can show more support to people with disabilities. So we're going to watch a video with Judith Butler and Sonara Taylor. And in this video, they're out on a walk and they're discussing the everyday life of someone with disabilities. Also, hello to everyone on Zoom. I don't know if they can see me, but if you've any issues, do let us know in the chat. Um, so just let us know. So yeah, we'll play this video now and I hope you all enjoy it. together and um, one of the things I wanted to talk about was what it means for us to take a walk together. When I first asked you about this, um, you told me you take walks, you take strolls. I do. And can you say something about what that is for you. When do you do it and how do you do it? And what words do you have for it? I think that I, I always go for a walk, mm -hmm. probably every day every I go day. for a walk. Um, and I always tell people that I'm going for walks. I use that word. And most of the disabled people who I know use that term also. Which environments make it possible for you to take a walk? I, I moved to San Francisco largely because it's the most accessible place in the world yes. and part of what's so amazing to me about it is that the the physical access the fact that the public transportation is accessible there's curb cuts most places almost most places i'll go there's curb cuts buildings are accessible and what this does is that it also leads to a social acceptability that somehow because because there's physical access there's simply more disabled people out and about in the world and so people have learned how to interact with them and are, are used to them in yes. a certain way. And so physical access actually leads to um, a, a social access yeah. and acceptance. It must be nice not to always have to be the pioneer. Yes, like the very definitely. first one they definitely. Need to have first to disabled explain. person they've ever seen. And, and yeah. Yes, I do you know, speak and think and talk and move and yes. enjoy life and suffer many of the same heartaches that you do. And anyway. Um, but what I'm wondering about is um, moving in social space, right? Mm -hmm. Moving all the movements you can do and which help you live and which express you in various ways. Um, are, do you feel free to, to uh, move in all the ways you want to move? I could go into a coffee shop and actually pick up the cup with my mouth and carry it to my table, but then that that becomes almost more difficult because of the just the normalizing standards of our movements yes. and the discomfort that that causes when I do things with body parts that aren't necessarily what we assume that they're for. 
that seems to be even more um, hard for people to, to deal with. He's got somebody's shoe. Someone's shoe. I wonder if they can walk without it. Yeah. I'm just thinking that nobody takes a walk without there being a technique of walking. Yeah. Uh, nobody goes for a walk without there being something that supports that walk um, outside of ourselves. Mm -hmm. um, and that maybe we have a, a false idea um, that the able-bodied person is somehow radically self-sufficient. Yeah. It wasn't until I was in my early 20s, about 20 or 21, that I became aware of disability as a political issue. Um, and that happened largely through discovering the social model of disability, which is basically, uh, in disability studies, they have a distinction between disability and impairment. Yeah. So impairment would be my, my body, my embodiment right now. The fact that I was born with arthrogryposis, which affects, or what, what the medical world has labeled as arthrogryposis. Um, but basically that my joints are, 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 are fused, my muscles are weaker, I can't move in certain ways. And this does affect my life in mm -hmm. all sorts of mm -hmm. um, uh, situations. For instance, you know, there's a plum tree in my backyard. And I can't pick the plums off the plum tree. I have to wait for them to drop or whatever. Um, but then, and so there's that, there's that embodiment, um, our own unique embodiments. And then there's disability, which is basically the, the social repression of, of disabled people. The fact that disabled people have limited housing options, we don't have career opportunities, um, we're socially isolated, we're, um, you know, in many ways, there's a cultural aversion to disabled people. Mm -hmm. So would disability be the social organization of impairment? The disabling effects, basically, of society. What happened? Where, did you come in contact with disability activists, or did you read certain things? I read, a, I read a book review, actually. Oh, really? Yeah, I just read a book review, and, and when that happened, I lived in Brooklyn, and I would... I would really try to make myself go out and just order a coffee by myself. Yeah. And I would sit for hours beforehand in the park just trying to get up the nerve to do that. Oh. In a way, it's a political protest for me to go in and order a coffee and demand help simply because, in my opinion, help is something that we all need. Yes. And it's something that is, is you know, looked down upon and not really taken care of in this society when we all when we all need help yes. and we're all interdependent in yes. all sorts of ways. Should we stop and get me something warm? I don't know. That's pretty Let's fancy. Find something. Yeah, I think we'd probably fall off my shoulders. Well, I guess we could try it on. Okay, so basically that's the back. That would be, yeah. Other arm, other arm. I like it too stylish. It's very stylish. Okay. It's kind of, you know, sporty and fancy. It's gonna be a new show, Shopping with Judith Bowler. <laughs> For the queer eye. Maybe I can just get it while wearing it. Hi. Hi. We we'll put the sweater on. Yeah, so, so it's, I'm actually wearing this okay. one that I'm wearing. Um, so it's by weight. Um, oh, it's by weight? Yeah. Can we guess? I could probably just do it for four bucks. That sounds okay. good. Okay. Maybe we the, the bills first and then sure. the <laughs> Oh, oh, I just, I just meant oh, yeah. this. Yeah, I just can't hold both at the same time. Thanks, there you go. Thanks. Thanks so much. I think gender and, and disability 
converge in a whole lot of different ways. But one thing I think both movements do is get us to rethink um, what the body can do. There's an essay by the philosopher Gilles Deleuze called What Can a Body Do? Um, and the question is supposed to challenge um, the traditional ways in which we think about bodies, right? We usually ask, you know, what is a body or what is the ideal form of a body or, you know, what's the difference between the body and the soul and that kind of thing. Yeah. Uh, but what can a body do is, um, is, is a different question. It's, it, it isolates a set of capacities and a set of instrumentalities or actions and we are kind of assemblages of those things. Mm -hmm. um, and I like this idea. It's, it's not like there's an essence and it's not like there's an, an ideal morphology. You know, what a body should look like. It's exactly not that question. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> or what a body should move like. Mm -hmm. um, and one of the things that I found in thinking about gender and even violence against um, sexual minorities or gender minorities, people whose gender presentation doesn't conform with standard ideals of femininity or masculinity. So if you would like to see the end of this video, you have the link in the brief that has been forwarded to you. Amazing. Thank you so much. Um, so I hope you all found that very interesting. We're going to do something a little bit different now. We're going to do a walking exercise. So Lassa is going to divide you into pairs in a minute or two. And we are going to discuss the following question. So you are visually or physically impaired. You have learning disabilities or are neurodivergent. How can my institution support me with my psychological and physical needs? For the Zoom participants, you'll also be put into pairs, and we're going to come back here at 3.30. So by the time we're in pairs, it'll be about half an hour, 30 minutes. And yeah, I hope you all have a really good conversation and enjoy your walk. See you at 3.30. Thank you. So I hope you've had a wonderful walk. And now um, I would just invite you to write up on your sticky notes, your impressions, your ideas. And we would like to invite you to bring your sticky notes up to the flip chart. And I will do little mental gymnastics and try to summarize this. And Esther will do There's even more moment. mental gymnastics because she's going to a, sort this into okay, subject areas. And then we are going to, then we're gonna have a final exercise where we start thinking about recommendations, statements for the, today. So please um, share. your ideas. Um, we don't need you to write a PhD thesis. This is, this is just one or two sentences, please. Keep it short. One point per sticky note, I need to thematically sort them. So if you have multiple different points, they need to be on two separate sticky notes. If you need more sticky notes, we have your Megan and Lasse. Lasse is self-proclaimed sticky man. So you can go to him for more sticky notes. All right, I've seen a lot of sticky notes by now. And I'm going to make a little bit of a conclusion. Gretchen promised that she would do it, but since she gave all the notes to me, I decided to, to, to take over a little bit. Uh, you probably won't see this, but this is actually organized. Um, and because you can't see it, <laughs> I'm going to talk you through it. Um, so. Uh, the things that we got a lot, and that a lot of you wrote down, has to do with training, with raising awareness among teacher staff, among the institution in general. So workshop for teachers, staff training, developing sensibility, uh, sensibility or sensibilization. Then another smaller theme that we had, we had three sticky notes on that. It's about 
um, like really giving support in terms of money and personnel to people with uh, with disabilities. Is it okay if I say it like that, people with disabilities? I'm actually not sure. All right. Um, these all these notes <laughs> are about the infrastructure. This one says elevator, very to the point. Um, then what we see here on this side is has to do with mental health. So uh, and and creating a safe space for that anxiety free environment. And uh, uh, like neurodiversity is still an unknown challenge. Let's face it. How do we deal with ADHD? Um, and maybe creating like a mentoring system or improving psychological help. So that's all about creating a safe space in which this can really uh, be. And we have here some really kind of concrete examples of that allow lots of time and assistance in exam situations. You're also regarding exams and kind of flexibility regarding studies in general. So that has to do with the time. Um, then we have here to look at the individual. So ask what is needed instead of providing kind of this general support that is supposed to work for everyone. And I think here we have some general statements about how to deal with uh, with disability, normalize it, show compassion, make contact in person, and open the doors, make the ID public. So that's that all has to do with that. And here I have a few observations or questions rather that I'm just going to read out because some of them are related and some of them are not. And it's not a solution or a suggestion, it's just more of a question. Not all types of disabilities will be able to perform at conservatoire level. That is a statement. To feel disabled, uh, too few disabled people have the opportunity to study music. Actually, I do see a team. Rethink and re-evaluate who is able, question and in between markers, who is able to do music and the criteria perception we have for who the musician is or could be. The difficulty to implement solutions, that's another, that's really another uh, question, like, hmm, I'm actually, I think that this person means, hmm, I actually don't know how to provide solutions. And the question, does every singing teacher think about modern stage productions in the meaning of diversity disability? So also, how do we deal with, uh, like, outside of education? in terms of disability and diversity. So those are the different themes. I'm gonna repeat them and then we can continue with the next part. Training and sensibilization, infrastructure, funding and personnel support, mental health support, time and flexibility, looking at individual needs, overall better awareness and openness, and some question about who and what does it mean to be a musician also when you are facing disabilities. So those are the things that I've seen and themed. Is there anything, anyone that kind of disagrees and say, no, my, my, my post-it is in completely the wrong section. Something I've missed. Well, that's great. <laughs> so now I'm gonna hand over to Gretchen. Thank you, Esther, for a really brilliant summary. So we're coming to the end of our day and we're gonna take this opportunity to spend 15 minutes in smaller groups and we're going to ask each of you to give one recommendation um, as you know the ultimate goal of this project is to create policy recommendations for our institutions so we're going to ask you to make each one recommendation with a moderator and we're going to look at the issues that have been discussed today so socioeconomic background, diversity, and disabil disability. Um, we are going to invite the moderators to share the recommendations you've made, and we will look at those tomorrow morning or tomorrow during the day. Right now, I have some announcements for the rest of the day. Um, so could I have your attention, please? We will receive these recommendations, which I which we're very grateful to you for, for your enthusiasm. And we will, we will look at these tomorrow. 
Um, right now, I just have some information about the, the boat tour, which is a, a great moment, which is awaiting us at, um, at 6 p.m. For those of you...